Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be unpacking question six from Queensland's external general maths exam from 2020. And this was our six out of seven questions on the exam. Let's get right into it. A company needs to complete the following project as quickly as possible. Each task can only be completed by a single employee and must be completed before that employee can start the next task. The owner believes that this project can be completed in minimal time with only three employees. Evaluate the reasonableness of this belief. Well, at this stage, we can't evaluate anything until we've created a network diagram. That's our very first step. And we're going to start with an open vertex with all activities that have no prerequisite. And it's really important that you make sure your vertex is large enough to write inside. One of the common mistakes that students make on drawing network diagrams is for activity charts is to think that you've actually got to write the vertex number or letter inside the vertex. That is not correct. You're actually writing the activity letter or the task activity on the edge and then also the time on the edge. That's a very important step. If you try and write all that inside the bubble as well as forward scan and backward scan, you are in for an absolute mess. So follow this video and watch what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna start with all our activities that have no prerequisite. You can see that that's activity A and activity B. They are both coming out of our starting vertex. A common mistake I also see students make is thinking that every activity needs its own vertex and so I'll often see a vertex with a line coming at it and another vertex with another line. Not correct. You have a starting vertex, a single starting vertex and anything with no prerequisite comes from it. Remember, activities are on the edges. So we've got activity A and activity B coming out. Something that's also important to remember is that you're going to need to possibly redraw parts of this as you go and discover different things. So I would always say perhaps start with a lead pencil and then go over it with a pen at the end. You do need a pen for your external exams, but a pencil, for example, to do your working. Okay, now coming out of each of these activities is a new activity. So the end of that activity is marked with an empty vertex, which also starts the next activity. Remembering activities are on edges. So coming out of the next one, we've got C. C comes out of A. A is its prerequisite, and it's got a length of two days. Coming out of activity B is activity F. You can see that there. It's got a prerequisite of F. Now, if we have a look on there as well, we've got activity um, E is coming also out as a prerequisite out of C, and it's tempting to draw that straight along. However, coming out of activity F is going to be activity H. So we've got E and F leading into one point, and then a new activity comes out of that. So that's why I've got done that that way. Okay, now coming out of um, just B is activity G. So we've really got three activities running in parallel, C, F, and G. Now coming out of activity E and F is activity H. And then we've got activity I coming out of activity G. And then also coming out of activity C is activity D. So it's a good idea as you're going to work out which ones haven't you included yet. I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. So all that's left is J. J will come out of H and I, and then they will run into a final vertex, which is also an empty vertex, where D will run into that as well. So some important things to note, you've got that starting vertex where um, all of the activities with no prerequisites comes out of that. And then all of your final activities run into the final vertex. Okay, so that's our first tip for drawing a network diagram. People don't have to use straight lines to draw these edges. I do see students use um, arrows up and down. I see also curves and that's all quite okay as long as it's very clear what it is that you're doing. So now we actually need to forward scan through our network. So the way that we're going to do that is to split all of our vertices in half. That means we can forward scan in the left hand side of each vertex and backward scan in the right hand side of each vertex. So we're going to start with our very first vertex, which is our open one that everything flows out of. And it's always going to be a zero because everything starts at time zero. And then I'm going to move along different pathways and add the activity time to the previous vertex's um, information. So if I look along activity B, for example, activity B takes four um, days. So zero plus four gives me four. Then I'm going to move along to G. G is going to be four plus three gives me seven days. 
Okay, now I'm coming back along the top edge because I'm basically moving along until I've got two arrows pointing into the same vertex. Now activity A, fairly straightforward, also coming out of the beginning, zero plus three gives me three. Move along with activity C, three plus two gives me five. Now in any direction I go now, I'm gonna have decisions to make along the way because I'm gonna have two arrows going into every other vertex. So I need to take my time. I'm gonna look at both pathways and make a choice. I'm going to add the um, latest start time for the previous activity to the activity time of the next activity and then I'm going to do the same on the other pathway and whichever is the greatest that's the number I put into the next vertex. So now what I need to do is make some choices going into this next vertex from the flow of CE or the flow of BF. Now, if I look at the BF pathway, it's four plus four will give me eight. If I look at the CE pathway, it's gonna be five plus five gives me 10 and I need to choose the greater. I'm gonna put that inside the vertex. Let's move along now to the activities um, where the flow is FH or the flow is G, um, G and I. I've got a choice for FH of 10 plus one gives me 11 or for GI, I've got a choice of seven plus one. Uh, two gives me nine. I'm going to choose the greater of those two being 11. And now I have my final vertex to, to fill in. I've got the choice of activity D, five plus eight gives me 13. And activity J, 11 plus three gives me 14. I put the greater, it's going to be 14. So now I forward scan through the network and I get my second mark. So now it's time to backward scan through the network. We're going to be filling out the right hand side of each vertex. So starting on the very far right, we start with the same number because they're on the critical pathway. So they must be the same numbers. We're going to move along different pathways here and subtract the value of each edge as we're moving backwards. So 14 take away three gives me 11. Then I'm going to move along the bottom pathway and I'm looking for places where I can go backwards until I have to make a decision. I'm filling out the easy stuff first. So if I move along activity I now, 11 take away two gives me nine. I'm now going to move along the middle pathway. So 11 take away one gives me 10 with activity H and I'm sort of reaching this point now where I have to make decisions. So I'm going to move back along the top now where I don't have any decisions just yet. So 14 take away eight is my first choice. That's six. However, if I come backwards, 10 uh, take away five is five and I need to choose the lowest. So when you're forward scanning, you choose the highest of two choices. And when you backward scan, you choose the lowest of the two choices. So we know now that um, this activity now is completed. We've got um, to go backwards, five take away two gives me three. And then we've got this last vertex in the middle after activity F and G. And so I've got a choice of four. Um, so 10 take away four gives me six or nine take away three gives me six and it's both the same. So I just put both of the same in there and my very first starting vertex will also be a match, zero and zero. So now I have backwards scanned through my entire network and I get my next mark. Now that I've done the forward scanning and the backwards scanning, I still need to think about the question I've been asked, can this be done with just three employees? And we can see that there's three main pathways through the network. The first pathway is A, C and D. The next pathway is B, F, H, J. And the third pathway is G and I. So we've got basically three, um, since one, only one employee can do something at a time, we've got three pathways where there is um, something going on at the same time or, or in tandem with the other activities. So we need, need at least three employees. So we need to have a think about how that would look. So we can see that it's 14 days to do the whole project and actually writing that down, the minimal time is going to be 14 days was worth a mark. So that's important to think about that in your evaluation. You can see that as where the network terminates at 14 days. And we can see that we've got three employees working consecutively across C, F and G and also D, H, I. So that we definitely need at least three. It's very tempting though to think that we only need three. We really should map it out just to see if that works. So I'm actually going to map those pathways on a timeline. So let's start with that first pathway you can see that goes A, C, E, H and J. So I've got person one, they're actually on the critical path. That's my critical path there. And the reason I know that's my critical path is that the number on the left and the right hand side of the vertex matches. 
So activity um, A takes three days, followed by activity C, activity E, activity H and activity J. And we can see that takes us right through the whole length of the project. Now, person two is going to be working at the same time as person one, but they actually don't need to kick off until later on. That's activity D. So person two, they're going to work there across day five all the way up to day 13 because it's an eight day activity. So we can see that's our second person working is shown in green. Now we're going to look at this next pathway, which is activity B and F shown in orange. And we can see that activity B and F, when we put that on the timeline, it actually overlaps with what person one's doing on the critical path and what person two is doing. So we know we've got three people working there all at the same time. Now, we need to work out what's happening on our final pathway, G and I, because um, G and I um, might actually be something that's happening separate to those activities. Let's just have a look. We're gonna show that in blue. Um, there's G, it's actually happening at the same time as E, D, F and G. And activity I on the end is also overlapping with three other activities. So we definitely need four people for this pathway. Now this is where there's a limitation with our activity network because it's kind of deceptive. It looks like there's only three pathways going on here. And then we will be evaluating the belief saying it's correct. But you've got to remember that these network diagrams are not drawn to scale. And what we've effectively done by creating this timeline is we've mapped it out to scale just to see exactly what's going on. So I would highly recommend if you're having to make decisions on how many people to use within a network, you actually map out the work on a timeline. So hence, we need to write a statement now that we've evaluated Three workers are not going to be enough. From day five to day eight, there are four workers all working concurrently. Hence, the owner is correct and we need a minimum of four employees to do this project. And that got us another mark for evaluating that at the end. We also got another mark for saying that we need four employees. So we've got this statement here, the owner is incorrect. That's our evaluation about the reasonableness of the belief. No, they're wrong. And also stating how many are actually needed. So it's not enough to just say no, three is not enough. He's wrong. You've also got to say how many are actually needed and that gets you the next mark. There was also an additional mark provided in this question for showing some logical organization and communication of steps. So this is where it's really important that your activity network is done quite neatly and that it's legible to see what you've done with your forward scanning and your backward scanning. And I see a lot of students making an absolute mess of those. So this is where the communication is critical and you get your next mark. Let's have a quick summary of where all those walk marks were awarded. Firstly, with that network diagram, then the forward scanning and the backward scanning. So three marks just for your diagram. Then stating what the minimum completion time was. So it's not enough to just have the 14 at the end twice. You actually have to be explicit about how much time it will take to complete the project. Determining that you needed more than three and saying no, the claim is not reasonable was also part of your evaluation. The timeline sort of fitted in there as well, some sort of method that you use to prove it. And then your communication and organization of your work for a total of seven marks. So this particular question, even though it's not super hard, it actually requires a bit more of that complex thinking because a lot of students would be tempted to stop after they've drawn their network diagram and just assume that three is enough. And that's why it's awarded more marks. It was one of the most heavy mark awarded questions on both papers. Well, that's all we have time for today. I'd like to welcome a bunch of new subscribers to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me here and welcome back to all of our existing subscribers. And if you found this video helpful, why not tell someone about it? Tell your teacher, tell a friend, like the, the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also reach us on Facebook and Instagram. You can direct messages there or on mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass. My name is Natalie McClutchy and I'd like to say thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day.